third stock that we want to look at um, in the United States um, that Candice has looked at. Uh, what is the third stock we are now looking at? So the third stock is called RockTech. Uh, so I was looking uh, again in this area of of alternatives, uh, more from the perspective of um, all of the electric developments in the electric industry. So electric cars, uh, batteries, uh, you know, which are needed for electric cars, for mobile phones, for all of these mobile devices that uh, are increasingly um, being used. Uh, so one of the companies that I, well, the company that I chose is called RockTech. I looked at a number of companies in this space that create lithium uh, batteries are mining for the uh, mining for and producing uh, lithium uh, for batteries. Um, and again, this was like some of the other areas where telemedicine, etc. Again, it's an industry that's let's say relatively early in its uh, in in its development phase, and therefore there are a lot of there are some established players, but there are also a lot of new players. Um, and it's an area where I found uh, it's difficult to choose the one company that you think will become the leader, um, also with not necessarily so much uh, data at hand. Um, so here I uh, I chose RockTech for, for two reasons that are maybe a bit more, less have to do with the numbers, as I said, and more with, um, uh, with some of the people who were involved. So oh, that's um, interesting. one is the, the chairman is... Uh, uh, an alumni of ours, so I, the the chairman of RockTech uh, also was in uh, St. Gallen, the okay. University of St. Gallen, okay. um, and they're becoming very active, so they are mining in Canada, uh, but they're also looking to build uh, plants in, in Germany, um, and I saw that okay. Europe is set to surpass China uh, in the electric vehicle market uh, in a few years, uh, and therefore will have much more demand and much more requirements for uh, lithium uh, outside of China, um, uh, in particular in Europe. So I thought that was interesting, but it was sort of seeing the, the alumni gave me a little bit of a, a confidence boost. Uh, so, certainly a good quality and, uh, <laughs> a quality sign that uh, the that guy was at the high scale as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, at the end of the day, he has to perform. It's not that easy. Exactly. A lot of graduates from there. Uh, but still, uh, I guess the other thing was that I saw that there were some big investors who were investing into rock tech. Okay. Uh, so some big uh, entrepreneurs, uh, a few hedge funds that had started to get into rock tech, uh, and I, I, I thought that that was a, a sign, a very positive sign um, for rock tech. Now they may be investing in other similar co- in other companies within the in- industry, uh, but I think that it was still for me as a, a positive sign of a few big players moving into this company. This is now an interesting approach. You know, I mean the the first stock that we discussed. Um, uh, was um, based on Obermott ranks, where you could say like, oh, the financials are really good. The second stock was based on uh, a business proposition, a product, a service that they did, which you really like. And now the third stock has a people component. You know, uh, I think that's really important. I actually have a friend who really loves to trade. He buys, and he said he's, he says he buys stocks only because of people. It's the only uh, criteria he uses. Uh, he, he looks at the CEO, and if he thinks that CEO is convincing, he buys the stock. Mm-hmm. I'm not so much a fan of doing something only one way. <laughs> I, I think these are all aspects that are important. The people are important. I have another friend, by the way, who invested in um, smaller stocks in Southeast Asia and realized that these smaller stocks are typically family controlled who do with those stocks whatever they want. So you really depend when you invest in a company, you very much depend on the people. Because if, if, if they are, they can do whatever they want with the company, they can maximize short-term profits and leave, you know, take the money and run. Or they can decide, I invest in this company for the future and I want this to be successful. Uh, I feel obliged towards the shareholders. And these people, of course, will provide higher returns to you as an investor. So I think looking at the people, is also an important factor, yes. especially uh, if next to the board there are also investors that have a say in the company that will make sure the company is managed professionally yes. to their best estimate. 
Yes, and I think that this it was, uh, you know, it's not only looking at the person, but, you know, the person who uh, invested a large amount of their, or I don't know if it's a large amount, but who invested, who made a significant investment, I'm sure that they were also able to get to uh, much more data than I was able to. So that was one of the factors that I looked at when it came to the people. Anyway, uh, RockTech is the company, uh, Lithium, I personally think we are in a process of changing uh, geopolitics. Uh, it used to be right after the Berlin Wall fell that cost efficiency was the most important aspect of managing a company. You know, you had to be really cost efficient. And I think a lot has changed, uh, not the least with, uh, not at last with the, with the pandemic. Now people realize it's not necessarily the most important point that you're the cheapest. It may also be quite important that you are resilient in a crisis. Right. And I think that will actually lead to a multiplication of supply chains. So while now most of these rare earth are from China, I think it is important that the supply chains will be more globalized to provide resilience in times of crisis. Mm -hmm. And I have a strong belief that this will happen, that, that there will be a, a large need for more resilience, which costs some money, but because we want it, China wants it, Europe wants it, the US wants it, we all want resilience in, your, in our supply chains. We want to be independent. Yes. You know, like even the Swiss, you know, they decided to, um, uh, to have their own mask manufacturing facilities now. And, you know, yes. mask manufacturing is really not something that has been traditionally done in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. But now that we realize we're not getting the masks in, term, in times of crisis, we, we decided to spend more money on local production. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, I think it's really smart to move into um, rare earth uh, raw materials that, are, uh, that, that use different supply places, basically different production sites mm -hmm. from the ones that are the cheapest these days. Yes, yes. And this was one of the uh, things that I considered. I, I mean, the... The raw materials still need to be transported uh, and um, are not only from a particular country. But one of the one of the biggest players in this field is uh, is based in Chile, uh, okay. and it just felt much further away from Europe uh, <laughs> than some of the mines that Rocktech has in in okay. Canada. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. So I hear what you're saying about trying to keep things close to home. Yeah, and I think that actually counts for other areas too, I think steel, you know, will be less important and more produced locally because steel is, is an important ingredient of our infrastructure. I think uh, manufacturing processes will be more distributed in the world so that you can manufacture the same thing in different locations, not just in one. You know, the specialization that happened after the, world, uh, the Berlin Wall fell is, is just one aspect of uh, of economics. The other one is really resilience, you know, staying crisis proof. So that's a good idea. Uh, this was RockTech? I hope so. Yeah. I would say that Nextera and RockTech were decisions taken not only uh, based on the, on the numbers, um, but also on a bit of the future uh, potential of trying to, trying to judge the business model and the people behind um, the business. Yeah. I think it's a good idea. The, the ranks actually help more uh, uh, if you have to look at different alternatives in the same industry. Mm -hmm. So if you come to the conclusion, I think uh, European banking will survive the credit crunch that they have currently or the, uh, the, debt, the bad debt that basically you know, sits on European banks, you still have to decide what bank to buy. Yeah. And, and, and it did help me in, in identifying companies to look at. Right. So it definitely was helpful for seeing how a particular company stood uh, where you had data, but then also identifying some, some similar companies. So yeah. it was a good, it was it definitely played a role in the input. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I made an example actually in a, in, in, a, in a video on value ranks where I compared Samsung to, to Apple and showed how you can even make a decision uh, based on the value rank uh, a lot easier when you know how they're relatively valued against each other. Yeah, absolutely. So that was the third decision. That's actually a company that interests me. I'm interested in Samsung. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. So I'll, 
take a look at their ranks and see okay. uh, if that might be the next investment. Oh, very good. Interesting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.